Now, so far, whatever we achieved with the help of the VLOOKUP function and the HLOOKUP function, that is also achievable with the help of the INDEX and the MATCH function. A good synchronization between the two functions just helps us achieve the same result. But first, let me tell you about the MATCH function. Now, what is the MATCH function? If I were to select equal MATCH, what does it say? It says returns the relative position of an item in an array that matches a specified value in a specified order. That means if you're looking for a particular value, it will tell you its position, where exactly is it located? For example, in this match function, I want to locate number 70. So I just put number 70, look up for this list, and match type, well, you can select accordingly less than, exact match, greater than. As of now, it's an exact match. I know it's there. So I hit enter and you see it's number four. That's one, two, three, four. It's fourth on the list. Now, what if I'm not doing exact match, but I'm doing an approximate one like less than. And instead of 70, I select 72. I hit enter. It returns number four. It's one, two, three, four, right? So it still returns that value. Now, what if this was 82? I missed on the bracket here. It's five, one, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth position. Now, that's how the match function works. In a match function, you can either select a row or a column. For example, let's try something more. Now, instead of manually entering numbers here, I would use this point as a reference here. And now using the match function, first here, what I'm looking for was, let's say 82. We are, here we have this, okay, the position number. It's five in the list here. Now, what if I would have selected the headings as well? Then the 82 would now be in position number six. It's number six in the selection list, including the headings. So be very careful when you're including the headings and when you're excluding the headings. At times you might want to include the headings, at times it's better not to include them. Now let us try something more. I want to know the position for FL in this list. So I say match, match for FL in this range and give me an exact match. This time I cannot afford any leniency here. It should be an exact match. Hit enter and you see position number three. That's one, two, three, four and five. Of the five records, it's the third position. If I were to change this to CFL, it's position number two. What if it was region total? Position number five. But what if it was only region? It's position number one. That's it. And this is how the match function works. So be it, good. But how can it achieve whatever we achieve with the help of VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP? Hold your horses. Like I mentioned, we have a match function which helps us determine the position number or we can also use the term as index number. Now, index number is very much to Excel. Position number is like what we talk, we say of the selection in this list, it is on the fifth position, sixth position or so. This is quite a layman talk, but for Excel, it's index number. So match function returns the index number for the value that you're searching for. Now, what about the index function? Now, index function returns the value in a given position or index number. So, okay, so we have something like index. There are two ways to use the index function. First is select the range, the array, and specify the row number and the column number. Now column is in square brackets, that's optional because in index function, you can select an entire matrix or you can just select just one column. That's absolutely fine. Index function is flexible in that terms. 
But in case of match function, well, you either select an entire column or you select an entire row. So here, let's say we select this comma. Now it's asking for row number. Let's say I'm looking for the totals of Southeast. So Southeast is in which row? One, two, three, four. It's on the fourth row, comma, column number. I want the totals, which is on the one, two, three, four, five, fifth column. Enter the value, close the brackets, hit enter. Well, you see, Southeast 850. That's the region total that we get. And this is how the index function works. But the only thing is here we are manually entering the values. Now, even if we were to use cell reference over here, this is not dynamic because we are using this manually. Let's say this over here and five will be over here. Now, in 2019, if you have the row number and column numbers, Excel might consider this as an array and will show this back again. Don't be bothered. This is a spill error. You just enter the right numbers here and it will be fixed. So we say four and five. And we have this here, wherein the red cell was the row reference and the purple one was the column reference. All right, so we spoke about the match function and we spoke about the index function, but how do they help us achieve what the VLOOKUP can do? That's still not answered. Well, let me show you how that works. The blend of the match function and the index function works out. Remember, the index function needs row number. Now, when you say row number and column number, this is technically the position that it's asking for. And this is what the match function is doing. Let me show you over here. We say equals index. Okay, now within the index function, we say select this entire range. Mind you, I'm excluding the headings over here. So if I'm using the match function, I will also exclude the headings. Otherwise, it might cause trouble. Now index, this is the array, comma. Now it's asking for row number. Now I do not know which row does this belong to, right? 72.5 in this list over here. I don't know which row should it be belonging to. One, two, three, four. It's four, but that means it's between four and five. So which grade should it show up? That is what we need to mention here. Let me just add, let me just shift this aside over here. So we have index array. I select this entire range, comma, row number. For to determine the row number, I'll make use of the match function, match lookup value. Look up for 72.5, look up array. I want to look up in this particular column, in this column of scores over here, and match type. It's okay to be exact less than match. Uh, there is no point of having a greater than match. It will return an error. So we need a less than match. Close bracket. So match function is complete. Now it's asking for column number. Now we know that the grades are in the second column. So we can manually enter number two here. Of the index function, the array selected over here of these two columns, grades are in the second column. You just select that and hit enter. And you have this 72.5, it's the C grade. Now generally, whenever I work on complex structures and it's too difficult, First thing what I try to do is I first make use of the match function to see if the position is correct. For example, I'm looking up for 62.75. Where are you looking for? I'm looking in this list and I want an ex a less than match in this case and close the bracket. Is it falling under the third position? Yes, it's between 60 and 70. Okay, now what if it was not less than but greater than? it might give me an error. Here it is, right? It's a hash an error. So be very careful what you select over here. Exact match will also give you the same error because it's not visible here in that list. So we say less than match. That's number one, hit enter. And once I would like to cross verify if the number is fitting into, if I'm getting the right position for this number, yes, I am. 
why am I cross verifying? Well, in case if I'm working on humongous data, there's a huge list over there. It's always good to manually cross verify if the position is correct. Because once you have it proper, once or twice you manually check in two different places, then you can rest assured that your formula that you have prepared is working as designed to be, as meant to be. So first I check the match function. With the help of match function, I check the position, which seems perfect. Then I encapsulate this within the index function. 